everybody welcome back to another episode of the gx hockey cast run episode 105 aaron ekblad of my little hockey show where once a week i go through all of the news and what's happenings in the nhl mainly focusing in on the toronto maple leafs and the calgary flames those are my favorite teams but i'll be talking about all 32 teams on this podcast what do we got on tap today well obviously we will be talking about the stanley cup finals that are still currently going on As of me recording this right now, tonight is Game 5. I won't be talking about Game 5, so rather there will be me talking about a Stanley Cup champion next week, or this series is going to go on. And yeah, we'll talk about that in a second, but some other things we'll be talking about. We got a lot to talk about with Columbus, some shit going on over there, Vancouver news, Winnipeg news, Utah, St. Louis, and some other stuff. But let's get into that Stanley Cup playoff talk, baby. So, Edmonton looked dead in the water. They were down 3-0. We get an 8-1 victory. Just, you know, a kind of a close game, a little bit of a nail-biter right right there. So, the narrative is beginning to change. But let's go back to Game 3, 4-3, Panthers win. (coughs) Oh, excuse me. We do get Darnell back in the lineup for that game. Whether you like it or not, Darnell came back into that game and it doesn't really matter all that much. The Panthers explode in the second period. Three straight goals. Bennett, like, dude, Sam Bennett is having a fantastic series. A very good playoff overall as well. And I know, trust me, I hear it all the time. Bennett is probably the most hated player on Florida. <clears throat> at least in in my area. Like, anytime I talk about hockey with anyone or the Florida Panthers, it's Sam Bennett getting brought up, this guy's a scumbag, this guy's a piece of junk, and all that, whatever, but, yo, man, like, even me, I am a Flames fan, Sam Bennett, former Flame, what happened there, why don't I hate Sam Bennett, well, you know, I can't hate Sam Bennett for the Flames not utilizing that player properly, and him going off and having success somewhere else just proves the fact that he was a great player, and Calgary didn't know what to do with him, and, now he's doing what he's doing in Florida, and man, that's the kind of player every team, every fan wants on their team, but no one wants to deal with this guy. If you had Sam Bennett on your team, if Sam Bennett was on the Leafs, we would love that as Leaf fans. If he was on fucking Washington, Washington fans would love Sam Bennett, and right now, Florida fans love Sam Bennett, because this guy is the definition of of a warrior. This guy will do anything and everything to get in your kitchen, score goals, win hockey games, and it is it is impressive, man. It is very impressive. No, it is most certainly not the cleanest way to get about winning hockey games, but we know this, man. This is what it takes to win a Stanley Cup, and Florida probably knows this better than anybody at this point right now because they got dusted last year by Vegas who was doing similar shit to them and they were just like all right then that's how it's gonna be we'll double down on that and look at them go it's not over yet though so but Bennett having a great series Bobrovsky there is a lot of talk around like his hall of fame uh credentials is Bobrovsky going to be a hall of fame goaltender I think like even without the Stanley Cup, if he, if they don't win it, I think Bobrovsky should be a Hall of Fame goaltender. He's got two Vesna trophies, so he has proven himself to be the best goaltender in the league multiple times. He has been nominated for it. Yes, he's had some not amazing years since he signed that 10-year contract or the $10 million contract, but he's actually been lights out in the playoffs for Florida the last two seasons. Um... Yeah, man, I, I I think with the wins and everything, he's still got years in the tank, I would imagine. He's 35. I can see him playing playing out that contract, and who knows after that. He could, I don't know, goalies are a little bit different. They can go on a little bit longer, and I could see Bobrovsky going until he's like 37, 38 years old. I mean, 
probably won't be making as much money as he is right now. And no, I still don't think he's necessarily worth that $10 million, but right now he's at least justifying it with these very long playoff runs. So Bobrovsky, I think he would be a Hall of Fame goaltender all said and done. Curious what you guys think about about, about Bobrovsky. There you go. Holy fucking shit. But I think he is a, a Hall of Fame goaltender. Yes, he got lit up like a Christmas tree in game four, but what is that? I think that might have been his one bad game in the playoffs. Yeah, you don't want it to go down in the cup finals like that. And some people might be thinking, hey, rather Bobrovsky's running out of gas or the Edmonton Oilers figured something out on Bobrovsky because they got three goals on him in this game. They got five goals on him before he got chased in the next game. So maybe they figured something out. Or, I don't know, maybe the Florida Panthers are getting a little complacent because they are or were up 3 nothing in the series. So Corey Perry got into the, he's in the series now, and he has an absolute fucking meltdown. Uh, the referees called him for goaltender interference, and I mean, I mean, he sat on Bobrovsky. He just took a good old sit. I'm just going to have a sit right here, boys. No big deal. So yeah, he gets called for it. He fucking loses his shit on the on the referees but yeah that was kind of that was pretty entertaining to see uh scary perry going absolutely insane in the penalty box but he can't sit on goaltenders uh the oilers do find their game in the third period but again up until this point the three games it's the defensive errors of the oilers that have cost them time and time again like it's almost like watching leaf hockey again like <clears throat> They're playing pretty good, get a couple good chances, doesn't happen, and then one itty-bitty mistake, or a major mistake, doesn't really matter, it's in the back of your net, and that is Florida's bread and butter. They are ridiculous on the counterattack, they will make you pay way more often than not, so yeah, the Oilers' defensive mistakes cost them big, what was it, Uh, I think Skinner behind the net, he goes to play it, just a big mistake, and then bam, it's in the back of your net, so... Yeah, that kind of shit, not not going well. The power play for the Oilers is still just dead up until Game 3 here. So they're still trying to figure it out. And we were back in Edmonton here, so we got the Canadian crowd. And they were, according to uh, you know the decibel numbers or whatever, very, very loud. But it was also scary quiet. Like once Florida... Got the, got a couple goals, got the lead. It was so quiet. It was like watching a standard Leaf game. Like, that's just how most Leaf games go. Dead silence. Are we even watching the game anymore at this point? It's so fucking quiet. But they were very loud when they needed to be. But, yeah, they were so quiet. So now we get to game four. The, the nail-biting 8-1 to one victory for the Edmonton Oilers. And the Oilers are getting depth scoring in this series. Like, Yanmark has been outstanding. Uh, I just heard a story <coughs> from Chris Johnson about uh, Yanmark had a big old speech in the in the season this year during a, a big loss from the Edmonton Oilers. Yanmark steps up, has a big old speech, and then that sent the Oilers on, I think, an eight-game winning streak. Then they lost three, and then it was that big 16-game winning streak. So they won like 24, 27 games. I don't think it was... A hundred percent Yanmark, but yeah, to have someone step up and say, "Boys, this is fucking ridiculous right here." Like, let's go, and then off they went. So, people taking that. <coughs> excuse me, I just I am dying today. But people are taking that stat like, oh, whenever the Oilers lose three, four games in a row or whatever, they go off on winning streaks. They go on eight game winning streaks, five game, sixteen game winning streaks. So. But you got to take that with a huge grain of salt because <clears throat> that is the regular season. This is the playoffs. This is different. You're playing the same opponent night in, night out. So it, it's not on the same level of that, of course. But there is seemingly a momentum shift happening right now in this series. That 8-1 win was big. Some people claiming like, oh, Florida, they just, you know, they let Edmonton win that game so they can win in Florida. Absolutely not. Florida didn't win the game, like, didn't let Edmonton win the game. Absolutely not. Did they maybe hold back on the gas a little bit? Did they, once they went down, were they like, ah, let's just, you know, we don't have to fight. We don't have to fight tooth and nail to get back into this game. This one's gone. So maybe they just let it get away. 
But you got to be very careful with that because now Edmonton has the momentum. Yes, they do have to go back to Florida, but you have to think about the Florida side now. The pressure has to start to be building now, right? Like, it's like, all right, we didn't get the sweep. Okay, not a big deal. We lost one game. We're going back home. It's going to be okay. So the pressure is not too high yet. But if Florida loses this game at home, now I think the pressure is completely in Florida's court. And at this point, it would be like playing with house money for the Oilers. It's like, all right, you're down 3 nothing. <clears throat> expectations are you know you're gonna lose a hundred percent there's there's no way so they're just playing their hearts out their their life is on the line at this point the season is on the line so they are playing with that fire that it's gonna be over if we don't win so obviously Edmonton is they have found themselves another gear and we're gonna see if Florida can match that gear or at least shut them down slow down the Oilers and who knows like what if Bobrovsky they figured him out. What if Stuart Skinner steals a game? What if Connor McDavid and Drysidle have an amazing game? Which, I mean, they did the last one. They had a bunch of points, but what if they continue to do this? What if the depth of the Oilers continues to go? Connor Brown and fucking, uh, not McLeod, the other guy. I have his name. I think I have his name written down here. Let's see. Yanmark. Non-playoff stuff, that's not Yamark Brown. Holloway. Holloway's been having a good little series here as well. Um, and that's good, man, because the you know the depth scoring with Edmonton, it's been a little quiet in certain series, but right now it's stepping up while the the bigger guys aren't going. And I mean Zach Hyman still needs to get going. Evander Kane, like he's just injured, so I, I don't really know what we can expect out of him, but oh Hyman in this series, like he's been a little bit snake bitten. Missing some wide open nets that he would never miss. So uh, hopefully Hyman can get back on track. Darnell Nurse, he scored the big goal. Uh, I think that was the goal that chased Bobrovsky out of the net. So that's huge for him. You can see in his celebration, like the weight of the world, just like, and him just staring at the crowd, man. Like, you fuckers. Like, look at this. We're winning. I'm on the ice. I scored a goal. And, like, stop being so mean to me and stuff like that. I don't know. And Sarah Nurse in the crowd just going fucking crazy for her brother. That is awesome as well. So, good for Darnell Nurse. Like, I like I don't hate Darnell. I'm actually a fan of Darnell Nurse. I like him. Uh, yeah, he's not the best defenseman in the world. But I like, I like dudes that can fucking hammer people. And I don't know. I like Darnell Nurse. Um, Stuart Skinner, he probably had his best game so far of the series I mean obviously he did it was a win and he made some unfucking believable saves in that game one against Reinhardt and one against Kachuk and you know speaking of Kachuk that guy has been hella quiet like very quiet in terms of point wise in this series he's been almost unnoticeable outside of punching McDavid's face after the whistles and stuff like that which is like again like is there something going on with Kachuk or is he is he too focused on the other shit, like getting in McDavid's kitchen and all that? We need some points out of you, Kachuk. We need you to get some goals out here. So let's get that done right there. Anyway, but a very good game for Stuart Skinner. We'll see if, like, he's a pretty good bounce back goalie. He'll come have maybe not his best game, but he generally will come back with a pretty damn good performance. And that's exactly what he did right there. So we'll see if he can carry that into game five. Very excited to see what's going to go down, man. Like, it's going to be a wild game. It's going to be wild. Like, let's just say Edmonton gets on the board early. Like, the pressure's going to be on, man. Like, it's uh, Florida does not want to lose this game. They do not want to go back to Edmonton. And who knows after that. If Edmonton wins that game, it's game seven. And then anything goes at that point. So, it's, it's, go it's still a hell of a climb for Edmonton. They have to rattle off three wins in a row to get this Stanley Cup, and against the Florida Panthers, the best team in the league, that's not going to be easy, but we'll see if Edmonton has something figured out on Bobrovsky, I don't know, but we'll just have to wait and see when we watch that game, pretty damn good series so far, it's, I mean, uh, I mean, I wish it wasn't necessarily a blowout, but we're starting to see, this could become one of like the all-time series. If Edmonton can crawl back into this and force a game seven, this could end up being one of the most dramatic, crazy series we have ever seen. So that is really cool. 
Can't wait for Game 5. It's going to be really cool. Sadly, i got to go to work, so I won't be able to watch it live unless uh, certain circumstances help me get home early, and that would be great, but I don't know about that. Anyway, so let me know what you guys think of the series so far. Who do you think is the... Let's talk about MVP for a second here really quick. Ah, so after that 8-1 loss, uh, Bobrovsky, that definitely took a hit for him, but it's also like, um, you know, Barkov didn't have the best game either. They, you know, eight goals against. It's not his fault. He didn't let in all the goals. But if I was picking on Florida, it's like definitely between Bobrovsky and Barkov. <sighs> Bobrovsky's been so damn good. He's definitely stole game one. Like, there's no way that Edmonton should have came out with a loss in game one. They should. They should be. They should have two wins in this series right now. They Bobrovsky absolutely stole game one. Um, <clears throat> I guess it would have to, like, uh, determine, like, if Bobrovsky can come back, have a really good game, have a solid game. I still believe that Bobrovsky is probably the front runner, just because he's had so many great games. I don't know if one stinker in the finals is really going to take away from what he's done <clears throat> as a total. But, you know, he has had some, what people would call easy games, where it's like, alright, he had, like, 20-something shots, but if you watch the games, man, like... He saves, like, there's just some big fucking saves in there. And you look at the goals above expected. He has had some outstanding performances. Game one alone, I think it was, like, almost six goals above expected. So Edmonton should have had five or six goals in that game. And Bobrovsky shut them out. So that is goddamn impressive. I wouldn't be mad with either Barkov or Bobrovsky. <clears throat> in terms of Edmonton, I think it kind of has to be. McDavid, you know, Drysaddle's been so quiet, and McDavid now he broke the the broke the assist record or something like that. He had, I think, it's 32 assists now, the most ever in a playoff run. Like that is insane, man, <laughs> absolutely insane. Like just 32 assists alone, like 30 points is absolutely insane for a playoff run, and he has that in just assists. I don't know how many goals he has. I think he's up to like seven or eight or something like that, but. Unreal playoff performance from Connor McDavid. And you look at Connor McDavid and what he and Leon Dreisaitl do playoff series to playoff series. These guys are unbelievable. And you compare that to like Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, not even close. Not even close. So <clears throat> Matthews, like what I'm expecting out of out of Matthews and Marner and Nylander with the money that they're making, I'm expecting dominating playoff performances and I have not seen that once not even once the best we get is like point of game Willie where he's scoring seven points in seven playoff games or something like that Dreisaitl and McDavid are doing like 14 points in seven playoff games so that is what we need out of the Leafs side and I don't know man I just don't know we're not gonna get too into that Leafs situation right now but Fuck, man. Unreal playoff series and uh, and a run for Connor McDavid yet again. So that's what I got for the playoffs. Let me know. Do you think this series is going to continue to go on a little bit longer? Or are we nearing the end of the playoffs and the NHL season? So let's get into some non-playoff discussions. Let's talk about Carolina. Carolina names Eric Tulski as the GM. And he's going to have... Uh, He's going to be busy this offseason, man. He's got a lot of work to do, and he's getting some work done. He re-signs Chatfield for a three million three-year deal right there. So I can't honestly excuse me, say a lot about Jalen Chatfield. I don't know a whole lot about him, but with um, people seem, at least Carolina fans, seem very high on him. Uh, he seems to work extremely well in the system with Rod the Bod, so... That is interesting, and with him getting signed, that only fuels the flames for the Nat the Natchez trade and other guys that are more than likely not going to be re-signed. Like, uh, I mean, Brady Shea seems like they're going to want to try and keep him, but Pesci, uh, who else is on the... There's a lot of guys on the list here. So, he gets Chatfield signed. That that's some solid work, 3x3. Three three. That that's, seems like it shouldn't be an issue right there. And there is a lot of interest around Natchez. Where the fuck is this guy going to end up? There's rumors around Boston. There's rumors around, I think Detroit had some interest in him. Uh, fuck, who was the other teams I've been hearing about? 
Uh, I think last I heard, they've kind of whittled it down to five or six teams that they're looking at to make a deal with. So obviously, it's going to be teams looking for some some scoring help. This guy can score. He had a very down season in his books. I think it was 24 goals, but 24 goals on a down season, that's pretty fucking good. He's still young. I think he's only 24, maybe 25 years old. So there might be a little bit more potential to unearth in this player and this one I'm pretty interested in like we see this a lot with Carolina where it's like okay they have a bunch of star players but like do they have like a super duper star like a guy that's going out there getting that 100 point season and it's like no not necessarily but does that mean Carolina doesn't have those guys like I think Sebastian Ajo could get a 100 point season if he just wasn't playing the Carolina system, but the Carolina system works. It gets them wins. It gets them playoff wins. It doesn't necessarily get them the Stanley Cup, but they're trying to find, they've been trying to find that dominant scoring winger, winger, and they're looking at Gensel right now. So that, again, fuels the flames. Like, are they going to be able to keep Gensel? Because, like, that guy's going to want a lot of money, and Carolina doesn't usually, you know, spend that kind of money. Uh, for free agents and stuff like that we'll see I just Carolina at this point it's like I don't you know they don't want many people making more money than Ajo and Ajo's on a great deal so we'll see what happens there where Natchez ends up going I feel like wherever he goes he's probably gonna do pretty well like I would be looking at a 30 goal season um, maybe not right away because there might be an adjustment period, especially if he goes to the West or something like that, gets traded to you know, Calgary for some reason. Like, there could be an adjustment period there. So we'll see what goes on with Natchez. But hoping he goes somewhere and it works out for everybody. That would be that would be nice. So new GM in Carolina, Eric Tolsky. There you go. He's getting some work done. We got some work getting done in New York. New York re-signs Capo Caco. For a one year, $2.5 million. So there is a lot of interest as pretty much every season with Capo Caco. Will he get traded? What are they going to do with this player? He's a second overall pick and he still hasn't emerged as that second overall pick. Is he a bad player? No, he's not useless or anything. He's fairly de- good at defense. It's just he hasn't found that offensive game. And, you know, <clears throat> can you really blame... Capo Caco, because, like, look at the team that he's on. He's on a very stacked team. He's not going to be getting a lot of power play time, if any at all. He's not getting top six time consistently. And, yeah, he's shown flashes of it. Like, there was that the kid line that was going really well for a hot second. But this season, in particular, was really rough <clears throat> for Caco. Not a lot of points at all. Not a step forward whatsoever. Base, a, a step back, if you will, honestly. And that's not good. You do not want to see a regression in a player. So what what does this mean? Is is it the Rangers' fault for not developing this player? Is he just just not going to live up to that potential? Sometimes that happens. I don't want to use the word bust because he is playing NHL games. He's an NHL regular. It's just I don't know if it's working in New York right now. And they can... You know, New York at this point, they could probably use something else that could help them more consistently in playoff runs instead of, you know, hoping this young player finds his way. So more than likely, it looks like Capo Caco will be getting traded out of New York. Where does does he end up? I would expect maybe an up-and-coming team, like maybe a San Jose, maybe a Utah, something like that where he can get in like he's definitely got to find a team where they would want to use him in their top six we've seen it with San Jose where I think they took it was like Verona they've taken shots on guys like that does it always work no but he's a second overall pick so and I don't even know what a trade for Capo Caco would look like he does I don't think he would have a whole hell of a lot of trade value at this point he's getting older He's starting to show signs of regression already where it's like, okay, he's uh, he's really not finding that offensive spark. Like, what do you do? Do you fucking send him to Pittsburgh, pair him up with Crosby, see if that unlocks it? Do you send him to Chicago, see if he can play with Bedard and that works? Do you send him somewhere like uh, Carolina? Do you send him somewhere where there's a lot of Finnish players? I think he's Finnish. Where he could 
I don't know, maybe just feel a little bit more comfortable. Maybe New York is an uncomfortable situation for him. It's the big lights, big city. Maybe he doesn't like that. Maybe he wants to go somewhere else. Regardless, as it goes for any of these players, I hope they find success. Like, I don't want to see a second overall player, you know, go down in people's eyes as a bust because he wasn't a point of game player. He wasn't scoring a whole bunch. But if Kako Kako can at least turn around to become a very so solid two-way forward a bottom six guy like you know that's a valuable asset in the NHL no you don't want to waste or use a second overall pick on a bottom six you know defensive forward but if if someone can turn him into something that would be great so we'll see what happens with Kako he's got one year with the Rangers so that's not a commitment from the Rangers most certainly like one year they're not they're not signing them long term the money that leaves it pretty tradable money right there. So it's a very tradable contract. We'll see what happens right there. Now we get to Vancouver. So they have Elias Lindholm over there. I doubt that Vancouver is going to be able to retain his services. Because at this point, if they did, Lindholm slots in as the third line center behind Miller, Pedersen, and apparently he's looking for something like a seven times seven, seven million, seven years. Do you want to pay that much money for a third-line center? Not necessarily. It doesn't mean he would be third-line all the time. Injuries happen. He can slot up. But at this point, it doesn't sound like Vancouver's all that interested in keeping him for that amount of money for that type of role on the team. Yes, he was extremely impressive for them in the playoffs, but... You know, he didn't, you know, he was not impressive at all in his arrival there for Vancouver during the regular season portion of him being there. So, I don't know. I think it would be more of a risk to sign him at this point. So, it seems like they're going to let him walk and we'll see what happens right there. We get to Winnipeg. Winnipeg is getting offers on Nikolai Ehlers. So, doesn't mean that he's going to be getting traded. They're just getting offers. People are very interested in this player. Like, hey... You know, hey, what are you doing with this guy? You, 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 do you love him? I think he's got one more year left on his contracts, like five or six million dollars. Not bad, but this player is highly skilled. Very, very skilled player. He was taken right after William Nylander in the draft. This guy was almost a Toronto Maple Leaf. And the only problem is, is he, he definitely struggles with consistency and injury problems. He's been injured off and on for the last few seasons and just hasn't really been able to find that consistency in his game. He's had some good seasons, but lately, not not bad. Like, he's definitely not a bad player. He's good. And another player that, like, of course, teams are calling for this guy. There's definitely interest. Like, hey, we can use a highly skilled scoring forward on our wings. A lot of teams could use that. So that's just up to Winnipeg if they're like, ah, do we, are we done with this player? Are we looking for something else at this point? Because, like, you know, they Winnipeg, yeah, they had a great regular season, but two seasons in a row now, they got dummied in the playoffs. So something's going to have to give. They're going to have to start looking at playoff-style players, maybe. And is Nikolai Ehlers a playoff-style guy? I don't really know. I don't know. But if that's what Winnipeg is thinking, maybe they make a move featuring Nikolai Ehlers. That would be really interesting. What would a trade like that look like? I don't know. It would... I really don't know, man. I, I have no idea. What is Winnipeg looking for? I would think defensive depth and, and probably probably a little bit more scoring depth, but and some toughness and, and so on and so forth. And there's also a lot of interest in their backup goaltender, Laurent Brassois, who could be going somewhere else. There might be potentially a starting role for Laurent Brassois. He had a fantastic season as the backup goaltender for Winnipeg. And that can be a risky, risky move. Some guys just thrive in that backup role. I get reminisced of the St. Louis Blues when it was, I think it was Halak and Elliott, those two together or something, or maybe it was Elliott and Bennington. But I just remember Brian Elliott thriving in that role, playing 30, 40 games, split down the middle. The guy was unfucking believable. And then he started playing like more of a full-time role and it, it was just a little bit too much for him and his numbers went down. So Laurent Brassois could be an amazing backup goaltender and a, and a so-so starting goalie. Or maybe 
this guy is a fucking really good starting goaltender who's ready for some more work on his plate. So we'll see. That's just a little rumor that I've been hearing that teams have been, you know, sniffing around Laurent Brassois. See if, uh, what are you doing, homie? Uh, You may be interested in a starting goaltender role because... We know there's teams out there that can use a starting goaltender. Even the Toronto Maple Leafs, necessarily. Like, they don't technically have a starting goaltender. They have Joseph Wall, but... That guy's only played a handful of games, and he was injured as shit last year, and he hurt himself in the playoffs. So, like, we're not 100% solidified on on that goaltending market. So, we'll see what happens with Laurent Brassois as well with the Winnipeg Jets. Okay, now it's fucking 12 hours later after another grueling night of work. But the Edmonton Oilers did it, y'all. They won 5-3. 5-3, to three, they take out the Florida Panthers, and oh shit, y'all, I think we just got ourselves a series. So Edmonton is going to go back to Florida, no wait, they're going back to Edmonton now, they're going to make them take that long eight-hour flight all the way back to Canada, like it or not, and uh-oh, I feel like I haven't watched the highlights yet, I need to go back and I'm going to re-watch the game and check out, see what's going down, haven't had time for that yet, um... But goddamn, man, I feel like Edmonton at this point has to have the momentum in their court right now after being down 3 nothing, and they just came back and won two must-win games. Now, do they have two more wins in them, or is Florida going to say, enough of this shit, and we're going to put them away? So, I will do, uh, I will hopefully break down the game a little bit more on the next episode when I'm able to watch the game, but uh, I watched a little bit of it, uh, of it at work. And it was 4-3 Oilers at that point. And yeah, so it was a pretty good looking game. I only caught like the last six minutes or so of the second period. But yeah, I'll go back and I will rewatch that game. But oh, buddy, I am so excited. I really, really hope that Edmonton wins in game six just so I can actually have the night off and be able to watch the game. Because of course, the, the playoffs have just never works for me it's they always make sure my days off no hockey except for saturday they're like oh no fuck you so yeah fuck me basically so hopefully game six isn't going to be the last one i know florida fans don't want to hear that shit but hey i i wouldn't mind being able to watch a game seven in the stanley cup i i don't in a stanley cup final i feel like that hasn't happened in a while i i can't remember the last time there was a game seven so I am rooting for that, just for, uh, I still think the Panthers are probably going to win, but I don't know, again, I have to watch that game and see how, how it went down and how uh, how things looked for the Panthers, but very interesting. Speaking of that, we got Columbus news, so I don't know if this is really news, but Patrick Laine wants out of Columbus, and that's, again, that's not really new, I feel like we all knew that, it's just... Where could Patrick Laine go? He's still making like $8 million on his contract. I think there's still a year or two on that deal. He's also currently in the player assistance program. So I don't even know if he's allowed to be traded while he's within that program or if he has to complete it first. I don't know the deets on that one. But I do know that Patrick Laine wants out. There's a couple of teams that I heard like just theorizing. I don't know if they're actually going to look at him, but... People were thinking Carolina. Maybe Carolina can unlock Patrick Laine. And I'm not going to lie. When I heard Carolina, I was like, what? I was like, that doesn't sound like a great place for him at all. But the idea is that Patrick Laine goes somewhere where there's a lot more structure and maybe a more solidified role for him. I don't know. But in terms of the Carolina system, I feel like that just isn't going to bring out like the best goal scoring from Patrick Laine. Like if he... Let's say it was Patrick Laine in his, in his heyday at, in Winnipeg where he was around a 40-goal guy. If he was drafted to Carolina the way that they're playing now, he'd maybe get like 30, 25, 30 goals. Maybe similar to an HS. He's getting like that amount of goals. Maybe if he goes somewhere else where they allow you to score more and be a little more free with your offense, then maybe he can get some more goals, Natchez. But Line and Carolina, I personally don't think that would work whatsoever. Carolina already has so much movement that's going to go down this season. So I don't know, maybe there is a trade there that they could do and and but I just don't think Line would be the guy. He's been, you know, in and out of the lineup, dealing with a lot of injuries the last few years. He's in the player assistance program. We don't really know why. Um, yeah, I don't think that one would be a fit. The only other team that I've heard 
is Utah because you know Utah at this point is probably going to be in on everybody that's available because they have so much salary cap and they're not the Arizona Coyotes anymore which means they may actually want to try and build a team that can win and go to the playoffs and stuff like that so maybe they look at a Patrick Line and go hey new place literally a whole new franchise a new city and these people may just embrace you because hey if you're our goal scorer they're going to love you for that. So maybe I, I could be maybe even a Seattle as well. Teams like that. A team that can use scoring on the wings, which, again, Carolina does need. I just don't see the fit for Patrick Line and the Carolina Hurricanes. I just I don't know about that one. But you can let me know where you think Patrick Line is going to end up. It sounds like he's not going to start the season as a Columbus Blue Jacket. That's so that that seems like a thing. Uh, Columbus is going to move off of him. And they also fired their head coach, Pascal Vincent, which is a little bit interesting because he just showed up last year. And after the whole Babcock fucking debacle and all that horrible shit. And yeah, he had to take over basically a sinking ship right out of the gate. There was really no opportunity, I don't think, for him to turn that team around. But I do think they did underperform for what kind of team they are on paper. I think they should have been a little bit better than that but yeah they were pretty rough so pascal vincent is gone they have not announced a replacement for that at least as far as i know so i don't know i it's who knows what coaches are out there right now i know there was some rumblings about uh what's his face the chicago guy uh quinville quinville i think he was he's still trying to get back into the nhl but i don't think that's going to happen and that would probably not be a good idea for Columbus to do that. They already brought in Babcock. He's got a horrible track record. And Quenville was involved with the Chicago scandal. So that wouldn't look good. So that I doubt we'll see Quenville back in. But man, that would be crazy if he fucking ended up being the coach for Columbus. It's like, oh my god, the disasters. All right, let's go. Let's talk some Toronto stuff right here. Not a lot to talk about, but a little bit. So Toronto released uh, Guy Boucher. He was running the power play last year, and you might have noticed that the power play wasn't very good. And, well, you know, I think it was top seven or top ten in the league or something, but if you look at what the power play is with Nylander, Matthews, Tavares, Marner, uh, Riley, like, it should be a top five, top fucking three power play and it's generally been the same story with it for like the last four years it starts out really really hot and then it just progressively goes down throughout the year and they don't adjust they don't do anything they're like ah no this keeps we'll just keep trying it and keep trying it oh it's not working is that not the definition of crazy am i wrong anyway so Guy Boucher is gone he's um it was always an interesting hire to have him running the power play because when he was a head coach he was always known as a defensive coach a very defensive minded coach where it's you know clog lanes and all that shit and to have him running the power play is like huh but apparently fucking i don't know he was he ran a power play like 700 years ago or something he was pretty good at it so they're like oh he's gonna dominate this power play and yeah that worked out fan fucking tastically so Guy Boucher is gone now personally i would have you know, maybe explored the idea of him maybe running the penalty kill because he's a good defensive-minded coach, but nah, he's out of here. So they bring in... Who the fuck did they bring in? Lane Lambert joins the bench. I, I don't know if he's a... I think associate. I have no idea. The rumor is they're going to maybe bring in Mark Savard as well. He has a history with Barube, so... That's kind of, there's, there seems to be a lot of smoke around that. So where there's smoke, there's probably fire. More than likely, Mark Savard is going to end up behind the bench. I think they kept Mike Van Ryan. Manny holtra has gone, which sucks. I love that guy. But yeah, so we're trying some new stuff out. We'll see how different the team looks. I mean, I am completely done with this possession game that they're playing. It just, it doesn't work. And the lack of adjustments that the team makes throughout the season has been, you know, alarming because it's just they keep trying the same things over and over and over again. And it's so clear that every team in the league knows exactly what they're doing and they continue to do it. So I don't know. There has to be a change in gameplay, uh, the way this team plays, because year in and year out it hasn't worked and it's been getting worse. Like the team's getting slower, the team's getting older, and yeah, this 
run and gun or whatever the fuck they're trying to call this, whatever this possession thing is, it doesn't work. So I don't even care. They can go and play this boring ass defensive thing. I won't watch it. Fine. I don't care as long as they're winning and they're playing playoff style hockey, which Keith mentioned a long time ago. He's like, we got to start scoring playoff goals and playing playoff style hockey. And we'll see. I don't know. At this point, I'm just kind of convinced that we're going to have another run back season of the Leafs run this bullshit back and we're going to have the same results they're going to go down in the first round maybe not even make the playoffs this time because you know I feel like the team may be getting a little complacent on that because I'm not going to say it's been easy for Toronto but it's been a little bit kind of automatic for Toronto to make the playoffs for the last little bit here so we'll see what happens with the Toronto Maple Leafs and we'll just touch on the Marner situation because I forget who it was. It might have been Pierre Lebrun who said it, but he's saying, someone's saying, some fucking analyst expert is saying that it seems like Marner's more than likely going to re-sign with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I know, I know, take a breath. It's okay. It doesn't mean that he's not going to get traded. They could they could re-sign him and then trade him. It could we could have a classic sign and trade on our on our hands here. But the more that this goes on and like the less smoke and fire I'm hearing around it like I'm not hearing really anything on Marner I'm not hearing like teams calling on him I'm not hearing anything like that so I'm starting to be a little bit more convinced that it's more than likely Marner's gonna re-sign in Toronto for if he gets a raise we're gonna riot we're gonna fucking storm Toronto and we're gonna destroy that fucking town we're gonna destroy that city because no fuego This kid does not deserve a raise. He deserves a substantial decrease in money, if anything, because he's proven year in and year out. He can't do shit in the playoffs, and at least Willie can, so they better not pay him more than Willie. Willie's already making way too much money, so there's that. So, I don't know. I feel like this team is pretty much boned. Like, there's... I don't think... I At this point, I really don't know if they're going to win a cup in the Matthews era. Maybe after Matthews Prime, but... The way that like this Nylander contract is, if they decide they're going to lock up Marner and they're going to triple down, quadruple down on offense wins, then they're never going to win a championship. They, they may make the playoffs a bunch, but they're never going to have success. So at this point, I'm very down on the Leafs. I have no belief in this team at this point to be able to create a championship team because the way I'm watching these teams right now, Florida, Edmonton, Dallas, Colorado, those kind of teams, this Toronto team isn't even close to having that drive, that passion, that fire that you need in the playoffs. I haven't seen any of it, nothing. Maybe a little bit out of Willie, but every year there just seems to be an excuse. Oh, Matthews is sick. Oh, there's this. Oh, someone's car got broken into. Oh, he's sneezing. Oh, fucking his girlfriend is mad at him. Blah, 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 blah. There's always some fucking excuse with this stupid team. Oh, Tavares got kneed in the face. He's half dead. So, oh, we got we have to lose this series now cuz whenever something a little something goes wrong, Toronto crumbles. When there's a little bit of pressure, Toronto crumbles. When there's any sort of forecheck, Toronto crumbles. When there's anything anything Toronto crumbles that's the story they've crumbled for what 60 fucking years now so I don't think it's going to change I can't see it with this group of players I don't think Matthews has it Marner doesn't have it Nylander doesn't have it not enough so and there's not enough money to build a supporting cast around this team Domi wants a zillion dollars Bertuzzi wants a fucking raise and it's not gonna happen we have a terrible defensive core that can't get anything done are they gonna trade uh Morgan Riley, they could. I've heard talks about it. Because Morgan Riley, though I love him dearly, I love him so much, he isn't the top two guy. He just isn't. I would love to keep him. He could be here still and be on a championship team, but you need an upgrade. And I don't know where that upgrade is. It's not really out there. It's not available. There's definitely nothing in the cupboards for the Toronto Maple Leafs and any former defenseman that is going to come up and do that. And if there is, they're probably going to trade him away to the Washington Capitals. So... We'll see. (laughs) Clearly, I'm very down on the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's going to be a rough year for me, uh, especially if if they decide to run it back because this year was already really rough for me as a Leaf fan. Like, I was already so disinterested in this team on paper because I was like, we're just we're just throwing shit at the wall at this point like we're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it doesn't work. So I don't know. At this point, I'm, I'm not sold. I'm not 
you know, expecting a lot out of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maybe this will be the year where I finally don't pick them because I always pick them to win the cup because I have to. Maybe I'll actually think with my mind this time instead of going with my heart every year and just picking the Leafs because there's just, I just can't see it. There's just no fucking way. So let's move on from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's talk about the New York Rangers. There is word that, well, it's already happened. The Rangers waived Goudreau, I forget what his first name is, Johnny? No, that's not right, that's the other guy. Anyway, Barclay, Goudreau, they have waived him in uh, the idea to buy out Mr. Barclay Goudreau on the New York Rangers, which, you know, it kind of sucks, but it makes a million percent sense because Barclay Goudreau makes a lot of money and he got like four goals this season. He had more goals in the playoff run than he did the whole entire season, and New York at this point just can't afford that kind of thing. Like, yes, this guy is awesome in the playoffs. You would love to have him on there, but not for the amount of money that he's making. And it's highly unlikely that anyone's going to take on that contract. So he's going to get waived. He's going to clear. He's going to get bought out. And then someone else can re-sign him. Maybe the Rangers re-sign him. Just like, hey, we'll buy you out. We'll pay you the money. And then we'll re-sign you for cheaper. I don't know if they can do that. I don't know if they can sign them, but someone else can. So... Maybe the Leafs can grab that guy, maybe grab him cheap, because that's the kind of playoff guy they need to have in the playoffs. Someone like that in their bottom six, that would be great. A bona fide playoff performer, and that would be wicked. But knowing the Leafs, they would pay him like $3.9 million times five, and then they'd buy him out or something. So again, we'll see what's going on there. But yeah, it looks like Goudreau is getting bought out. And another buyout that may be happening, this one a little... Not as for sure, but Buffalo may consider buying out Jeff Skinner's contract, which is interesting. Like, yes, it is pretty, it's a lot of money, but he has been not as bad as he was. But yeah, it's it's definitely a a little bit expensive. And I don't want to like say that Jeff Skinner is, but you know, he's never played a game in the playoffs. I don't think he is currently the longest player to have played without playing a playoff game so maybe he just brings like that you know ah it's okay we'll get him next time mentality where it's like no dude we have like the sabers haven't made the playoffs in fucking 800 years it needs to stop it needs to stop like this team on paper they should have made it last year man honestly well i wasn't convinced because the goaltending didn't i just i didn't believe in the goaltending and i was proven right it, it's too young and unproven at this point but ukapeka lukanen looks pretty decent we'll see if they buy out skinner it doesn't i don't know at this point it just kind of sounds like talks is i don't know man like i don't even know what that buyout would look like is that is it is going to be a huge penalty that they're going to have to deal with more than likely it's a huge contract but at this point you might just be better off to keep him like he's been good for 30 goals i think like yeah you you signed him as a 40 goal guy but you're stupid so you shouldn't have done that so we'll see what goes on with jeff skinner we have utah they unveiled uh their jerseys and everyone's upset they're all oh, they're so plain they're ugly they stole the jets colors or whatever the hell it's just a mock-up jersey that they're just gonna wear for the first year they'll come out with real ones similar to like the pwhl like this was pretty sporadic right like Arizona just kind of, okay, we're gone, we're going to Utah, and there's a lot more things that they're probably thinking about outside of fucking jerseys, so they just kind of threw Utah on there, it doesn't look amazing, but hey, just, just, you might want to buy one though, you might want to buy one, because that could become a serious collector's item, the the Utah jersey before they had a name, the Utah jersey before they had a logo or anything, that could be worth a lot of money down the line. So I may even consider buying one because I feel like no one's going to buy them, at least these ones. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, they're pretty plain Jane. I, you know, I'm, I don't like the fact that they're just... Are they not stealing the Winnipeg Jets colors? Does it not look almost exactly the same? Why is there no pink? Why is there no pink in this league? Like, I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, man, it would be really cool. Like, I love the Calgary Flames jersey. I love their colors. I love everything. But, Bret Hart. Bret Hart, fucking pink, black, and white. I love that color combination. And if the Calgary Flames change their names to the Calgary Hitman, and, like, Hitman after Bret the Hitman Hart, oh, my God. I would go crazy. I know there's a team called the Hitman. I think it might even be in Calgary. But still, NHL, we need some pink, dog. Or purple. How about purple? Uh... 
I think it's the LA Kings. They might be doing a rebranding here soon. I think that's the rumor. Same with the Ducks. The Ducks, it looks like they're bringing back the the old Mighty Ducks style logo, which is meh, fantastic. Because who the fuck likes that web foot? That web foot sucks. It's so stupid. But they want a cup with it, so that's why it stuck around for so fucking long. All right, speaking of sticking around for a while, it looks like Alex Steen will be sticking around with the St. Louis Blues for a little bit longer, but not as a player. He is going to be the assistant to the assistant to the GM or some shit like that. He's Dwight Schrute with the with the St. Louis Blues right now. But this is to get Steen ready for potentially taking over someday as the GM of the St. Louis Blues, which is cool, man. Like, again, classic Leaf thing, like... Leafs trade away a fantastic player who ends up becoming a, like a lifelong blue and now he's working for their organization. It's just like, man, Toronto sucks, man. They're so bad at making trades. It's fucking pathetic. Anyway, that's really cool for Alex Steen, five years, and we'll see how long it takes him to become a GM in the NHL or if he ever does. So that's pretty cool. Speaking of pretty cool, the NHL Cup Final ratings are up almost 50%. I probably should have mentioned that while we're talking about playoff stuff, but fuck it. I'm mentioning it now. And, you know, it's not really all that big of a surprise. You look at the finals last year, it was Florida and Vegas. Like, yeah, Vegas is Vegas, but, you know, Florida, you know, people weren't still sold on Florida. They had a huge track record of just kind of being a whatever team in this league and almost moving a bunch of times being mostly irrelevant but this year this is their second run at the cup in a row so people are like all right this team's legit they're starting to you know know the characters of the team Bobrovsky, Bennett, Kachuk, Barkov all that shit and then of course you get a Canadian team on the other side which just happens to have Connor McDavid on there so yeah obviously the ratings are going to be skyrocketing which is you know, that's always good. It's always good to have people watching the game. And yeah, so that's pretty good. That's a good thing. And <clears throat> what else do we have? Okay, so this isn't a good thing, but we have to discuss this. So the players that were involved in the 2018 World Juniors trial, apparently they're all now to become restricted free agents with their respective teams. So Carter Hart is going to be a restricted free agent. And what what the fuck does that mean? Does that mean... They could resign him on a new deal. Can they release him and someone else can sign him? Or are they just like, I'm so confused by this. Like, shouldn't these guys not be allowed back in the league after what they did? Is there like, I don't even know what's going on with the trial. Were they convicted? Were they like, I don't have any information on that. All I know is that allegedly they're to become restricted free agents, all of them. And the league is leaving it up to their teams to decide what to do. And I think that's a bad idea. Obviously, their team, more likely than not, is going to be like, this is an asset. We can't just let this at Like, are you just going to let Carter Hart go? That's a first-round goaltender right there. I don't know about that, man. Like, I can easily see the Flyers just being like, we'll let it go. We don't care. Here, Carter, here's an eight-year deal. Fucking, we don't care. I mean... I don't know, man. That was a little bit alarming to me when I heard that. I was like, what? That just sounds insane to me. I I personally think that they shouldn't be allowed back in the league after doing something like that or or being like a convicted felon for something like that. And you're around people and kids and families and stuff like, I don't know, man. That just tickles me the wrong way. In fact, it doesn't tickle me. It it kind of pisses me off, honestly. So I I don't like that at all. Um, you can let me know if you know anything more about that, but that's what I heard and very confused about that one. So yeah, so that's all the news that I have for the show this week. I will uh, hopefully get to go watch that game. I'll probably go watch it right now, actually go watch it and see how it went down. The only thing that sucks, I already know the score. So, oh, well, it is what it is. That's what happens when you work evening slash nights. Yeah. Yeah. Miss the hockey game sometimes. So it, it is what it is. But, um, before I go. I must thank everybody so very much. We have hit 5,000 all-time downloads for this podcast. I I know it probably is not a lot for a lot of people and been doing this podcast for two, three years now or something like that. And I don't know, man, I'm super amped about 5,000 downloads. Like, again, as it goes with like any project that I start, I don't expect anything. I don't expect people to ever listen or like it or enjoy it, but... 
I don't know if there's someone out there that's and you're not a robot or something like that's always my concern is like all these downloads are fake and they're just robots and no one's real but oh well if it is oh well that's that that is what it is but again thank you everyone so much for listening to this podcast last two months of this podcast it's just like been consistently really good like I'm getting nice numbers every single day like more often than not I would go no most days with no downloads and now i'm getting downloads like every day so like man i'm just over the moon about that so thank you everyone if you've been here from the beginning fucking new it doesn't matter thank you so much for listening to this podcast in terms of what else we got going on with the podcast this week i gotta do the pokemon stadium 2 we're gonna do a little retrospective talk review i don't know what it's gonna be but we're talking pokemon stadium do on the gamer cast this week so that'll be a lot of fun uh we got the hockey cast and the wrestle cast at the pay-per-view review uh clash at the castle review is up along with the weekly recap we'll have a weekly recap this week and i don't think there's any pay-per-views as far as i know uh money in the bank is coming up i have Uh, My wife and I are going to that whole weekend of wrestling events. We're going to the Friday Night Smackdown. We're going to Money in the Bank Saturday. And then I think it's Heat Wave, the NXT pay-per-view on Sunday. So that is going to be, that's by far the biggest wrestling weekend I've ever had. I am very excited to see Money in the Bank live. It is going to be insane. So We'll be talking about that in uh, not too long from now. So make sure you're sticking around with the podcast. I have a Twitter page where I put up announcements and all that good shit. You can go follow along over there. There's a YouTube channel, Gamer GX Videos, where I upload all of these episodes. You can go over there, watch them on YouTube. Great place to drop a comment on those videos. You want a question answered live on the podcast, drop a comment on YouTube or Twitter, anything really. Just ask question about wrestling video games hockey doesn't really matter but you know be nice be nice about it and i'd love to answer your question got an email address there as well if you just want to have like a private conversation my door is open for everybody so there you go again thank you so much for listening to this podcast and here's to another 5,000 million more downloads and we'll be back with some out gx plus gazed.